I'm Daniel. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the Ultimark Ultimate I.O. board. Well, this is it. And it's basically the brain of the arcade machine. It drives your LEDs, your LED buttons, and it converts the, uh, the inputs to, uh, to keyboard uh, presses. And it's an amazing device. I have two of them, two of them in this build. And in this video, we're going to take a close look uh, what you get, how to wire it up, uh, where are all the uh, inputs for, and etc. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, this is what you will get, basically. I will get the cl close-up of the board. This is the Ultimate I.O. board. You can see um, two rows of pins here, and these are for the LEDs. You can see the, the LED numbers, 1 till 96. You have two small rows. These are for button inputs or the trackball or the spinner. Normally you would use this for player 3 and player 4. Or you can use the trackball or the spinner natively on the board. And these are, and they are all labeled, which is really handy. So, and these are for player 1 and 2. You can just exactly see how to connect them here. You can also buy a harness, which looks like this, which is super easy to work with. These are for player one and player two. You just plug it into the board and then you connect the outer ends to the corresponding buttons on your control panel. So to start with how to wire the harness, uh, you can see that there is a black cable on one side. The rest is not important for now. You have the black one on one side. And this black wire goes to, let me get a close-up shot here, ground. So this pin is for the black wire. So if you want to insert the harness, you just connect it here. Attach like this. Here you can see the two rows for the LEDs. And they're also labeled in a very easy way. If you buy the... RGB buttons made by Ultimark. This is the gold leaf version. I have already showed you in another video. They come complete um, with this connector attached. And then you just need to keep in mind it's um, uh, yellow. Let me get it in focus. So it's yellow uh, and then RGB, so red, green, blue. And this corresponds with, let me check, positive and then red, green, blue. So the left um, pin is always the positive pin, which is the yellow. So if you want to attach a button, you just get the button. Doesn't matter where you put it. I will put it on the second row, like this. And now the button is attached. So this is how you do that. Then you can see this adapter right here. And there is a connector uh, included if you buy this ultimate uh, controller and you just connect it to your power supply of your PC, it needs five volt. So a five volt connector will be sufficient and this uh, will drive all the LEDs. There are also some high current drivers uh, attached. You can see one here, which is a one amp driver and a one amp driver here. So you can install maybe, well, uh, a bigger light or, or an LED that needs more current. It, um, it will give you only five volts. Um, and on the website, the Ultimark website, there's an uh, example how to um, connect maybe a small LED strip, which needs uh, 12 volt to, this, uh, 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 to these pins. And uh, keep in mind that these pins are exactly the same as the first four on the top row. So you cannot use them um, uh, simultaneously. So if you're using these, you cannot use one till uh, four here. So the first row you need to uh, discard. Uh, I don't use these, but it's great that they are on the board. Also a quick tip, you can see that there are two connector sizes. There are even more than two, but these are the most commonly used ones. If you are using the gold leaf buttons, you go for the small connector one, uh, two point something millimeter. 
if you go for the normal RGB buttons or, or um, uh, switches, then you use the larger one. And when ordering um, the harness, you can choose whether you want the small one or the large one. So for the button I just showed you, this button, it has very tiny connectors. Let me, let me see. So the small size will fit in. Like this. Okay, now let's talk about the Win IPAC program, which is the most important of all the programs. And we can find it on the Ultimark website. We can go to Downloads, I think. And then we go to IPAC Ultimate IO. And if we are lucky, yes, it's already in the screen. So it's Win IPAC version 2. And this is the big program we are going to use to configure all your buttons and etc uh, etc et and map them to key presses so you can download the program here i already did it and it's in my ipac folder and it's called win ipac and here it is and you might be overwhelmed with all the features and stuff you see here but it's actually super easy it's it's absolutely very easy to program and I'll show you uh, directly how to do it. So the only thing you need to, to, to know is that if you um, press a button or a joystick or, or anything, you want to map it, you want to convert it to a keystroke because MAME and RetroPie and Hyperspin, all these software um, and all these emulators are more, um, um, uh, 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 they work better with keystrokes, not with gamepad inputs. So that's easy. We're going to make keystrokes out of every button. And the way we do it is very easy. Select each of the individual pins. Uh, you know these pins because you connected them to the buttons. And let's say that, uh, so we connected the one player up to the up uh, portion of the joystick. Now, very easy, to the right side here, we can see gamepad, key, or mouse button mode. Now, we always choose key, or sometimes, uh, like I did in this um, example, uh, I used the mouse buttons for mouse left and mouse right. So I mapped these two buttons to be mouse buttons. But for all other functions, we're going to use key. Well, so we select key, and we say the primary function when we move this uh, joystick up is, well, whatever we want. So here you can see everything that's on the keyboard. So if we want it to be A, then the next time we press up on this uh, joystick, uh, the computer thinks it will, be, it will be an A key pressed on the keyboard. So it's already configured for you, but you can uh, quite easily make changes here. Let's say, for example, that we have two mouse buttons. Uh, let's say a player um, here. Let's say 1A and 2A, these two, we uh, hooked directly to our mouse buttons. So we go to 1A, we go to mouse button. Uh, we can select which one we have, like mouse button right or middle or left. It's actually quite amazing. Let's say it's the left mouse button and 2A is the right mouse button, like this. Now the color is changed, and now these two buttons will be the mouse buttons. Here you can see player three and the trackball, and the spinner and player four. And like I told you before, you can choose a two-player setup with a trackball or a spinner, or a four-player setup, but you, you cannot use the spinner or the trackball. So if you want to do that, you or you need to um, hook up the trackball and the spinner with USB um, uh, uh, cables to your computer, or you need a second iPad, like I'm using here. And then the advantage is uh, that you also have more uh, RGB buttons you can attach. Um, you can also um, uh, get make macros, macros running here. You can do some configuration, but this is all expert level. This is the only thing you need to know. One last uh, tip, 
you can use shift functions. Let's say that, um, that you want one button to have two different functions. And it's really easy, just like the shift key on your keyboard. Um, you can say that uh, button, uh, well, let's say button one um, is a shift uh, button. And then you can uh, uh, click on this small box here. I pack shift. If I do it, now switch one, which is this one here, is also a shift button. So if I press it and then I press another button, it will go to the shifted um, function. So let's say that uh, switch two actually is also, uh, so it's already on left alt, but it's also the caps lock feature like this. So if I hold down button one, now it's in shift mode, and then directly I press um, or simultaneously I press button two, now button two is caps lock. This is how that works. Uh, you might not need it that often, but it's a great feature and this is how it works. So when you are done, you go to force port reconfigure and exit. You can also save your file um, and um, uh, save it on the USB stick that if you want to reinstall your PC or your computer that you can import this. So therefore there's the import uh, feature uh, for now let's close the program. Are you, shouldn't, are you sure you don't want to save the changes? No, I don't want to save. And we are all done. So let's start up Hyperspin. And um, everything runs perfectly. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this uh, tutorial video, this small tutorial video about the Ultimate IO board. Uh, if you want to order the board, um, go to the Ultimark website. If you have questions or you want to have more information, you want more information uh, how to change the ID of the Ultimate board, you can just contact uh, them directly by sending an email or you can uh, ask me, of course, and I will try to respond um, uh, to each uh, question. I uh, want to conclude by wishing you lots and lots of fun building your own arcade machine. Uh, it's not as difficult as it seems. And if you, if you have good material uh, like this board, you will uh, be up and running in no time at all. Thank you again. See you in the next video. Bye.